In today's video, we are going to take a look at helpers and how we can implement them and how they can help us out in the development of our React 3 Fiber application. Hey, how's it going guys? My name is Daniel aka Hashlips and welcome back to my channel. Like I said, in today's video, we are going to take a look at helpers. Just to let you know, if you want to follow along, please follow the playlist of this course. This will get you up to speed on React 3 Fiber, as well as get you to this point where you can code along with me. Up until now, we got this cube to rotate with an animation, as well as implement some orbit controls. And now we're going to take a look at helpers. If we look at the React 3 Fibers documentation, we cannot see a lot on this subject, but that's okay, because as we know, React 3 Fiber exposes everything that is in 3.js. So if we go here to 3.js, click on the documentation, and if we scroll down to the section where it says helpers, we can almost use everything in here directly. Now, when I say almost use everything, you can use everything. Although some of these components take a bit more to implement, but we'll get to that in just a second. For now, let's take a look at the Axes helper. This is a simple helper that we can add directly in React 3 Fiber. This is the class, and as we know, with React 3 Fiber, we can use the same one, but with camel case. Back in the code, make sure the application is running. And here in the canvas, what I'm going to add is the axes helper. Now you can see the camel case over there and we can simply end it. And if we go back to the application, we should see it over here. We can see the X, Y and Z axes that is now represented to us by these lines. In the 3JS documentation, we can see that axes helpers takes in a constructor argument, which represents the length of the legs. So, in the code, we can now add args and pass in a length of two. And now these legs are a bit more extended. Another cool thing I would like to show you is that because we are using React, we can create a variable over here and let's call it testing. And we equal this to true. Then in the helper, let's target the visible field and set this equal to the testing over here. Now currently this is not a state uh, variable, but it is pointing and saying this should be true, the testing, meaning that this should be visible. So going back, we can see it. But if we turn this into false and go back, we don't see it. And this is a nice way of differentiating when you are developing and testing and when you wanna see the components or not. This is great and easy enough. But what if we wanted to apply a box helper around our spinning cube? We can see that we will be able to create it, but it takes a reference to an object as well as a color. We can implement this in React 3 Fiber directly, but we will need to make use of references and there's a lot more involved. This is the time that I want to introduce you to a new package called Dre. If we go back to the documentation and click on this button, we can find Dre over here. Now, Dre is a helper package. It has a set of tools that's been developed by the team and the community to provide us a lot of helpers in the case of using React 3 Fiber. These are not the same as the helpers that I've shown you, but way more. Here we get camera helpers, for instance, different cameras, controllers, abstractions, loaders, and a bunch of cool stuff that we will go through in this series. For this video, we are interested in the use helper tool that Dre provides for us. This will help us to implement these helpers from 3JS. This use helper tool from Dre will make it convenient for us to implement helpers. So let's go and see what we need to do. Firstly, we need to install Dre. So go ahead and copy this command. Go back to your code and in the terminal, make sure that you are not running the program. So I'm going to press control C and now I'll paste the command and then hit enter. This will install it. So let's just wait for the installation to complete. Now that we have Dre installed, 
we can go back to the documentation and see how can we use this helper. Here we can see that the use helper is a hook and this is how we would use it. We can specify a helper provided the mesh reference and choose a color. Now we're going to try and use this box helper, but just as reference and something for the future, if you see the word use in front of something with react, it is almost 100% always a hook because this is the naming convention for hooks in React. Back in the code, we're going to go to the animated box component that we've created in the introduction. And here at the top, right after our reference, we can now specify the helper. At the top, let's import the hook. And in here, we're going to use it. So right after our reference, we can see that if we hover over the use helper hook, it takes in a 3D object. Then we specify what kind of helper we need as well as some arguments. So we're going to provide it our mesh reference. Then we want to add the box helper. And with that as well, a color. I'm going to make this one blue. We can see that the box helper was imported from the 3JS library. Let's save this and in the terminal below, we're going to say npm run dev to start up our local server again. Let's go back to the application and reload. And now you can see the box helper. This blue box that we've added shows the bounding areas and the space that this cube takes up. Now you might wonder why is this necessary? Well, let's say for instance, there was something wrong with our material. We don't have a material. So that means that if we go back to the scene, we won't see the red cube because the red is actually coming from the light. And no light can hit an object that doesn't have a material. So here we can see there's something wrong and this is just going to help us with debugging and each helper serves a different purpose. This example becomes even more apparent if we place back the material, but on the mesh we set the visibility to false. If we save this and go back, we can see that the bounding box of the helper is still picking up that something is in there. And with the animation, we can see it grow and shrink, indicating the bounding areas. Let's turn the visibility back on so we can see our cube and take a look at other helpers. Seeing that this video covers helpers and ways to make our lives easier, why don't we use the orbit controls? So if we close this and go back to the index.tsx, we can import the orbit controls from Dre as well as some stats. We'll cover stats in just a second. But previously, I've shown you how to create your own orbit controller. But now because we have this already, let's replace our orbit controller with Dre's orbit controls and save this. And let's go and have a look. We can still use it and um, it works perfectly fine. This means that we can get rid of our orbit controller and in turn reducing the amount of code we write. Taking a look at the stats component, if we add it to our scene, we can see some stats. So let's add that and go back to the scene. And here we can see at the top left corner is a frame rate. Frames per second is 120 frames. 120 frames per second is very good, but you will notice as you populate your scene with more objects, more heavy geometry, the frame rate might reduce. And this is a nice way of checking if your application is healthy and actually for a consumer to use it if it's going to be smooth. In my opinion, it's always a good idea to have these stats activated when you are in development. Let's now quickly restructure the code. So I'm going to move the stats to the top. Then we have the axes helper. When it comes to this visibility field, I'm not going to have it ask the question there because it will still render this axes helper. Instead, I'm going to use this testing field to say, if we have testing activated, render the stats, else don't and render null. This is the flow that I'll follow. So I'm going to add this here. Let's cut out axes helper 
and place it in there as well. So now what will happen is only when testing is true, it will render the stats as well as the axis helper. We can test this by saving it, going back and seeing our stats and the axes over there. But if we go and turn this to false, save this, go back to our scene, we can no longer see the stats as well as the axis helper. But we still see the box helper. And that is because our box helper is living inside of the animated box. With React, there's a lot of ways that we can actually pass this variable down, maybe wrap it in state or in context. But what I'm going to do is actually just add a variable. And I'm going to say this variable is, is testing. And it's going to point to testing. In order for us to make use of this variable, we can now go into the animated box. And here where we pass in the properties, we can search for the is testing variable. We can then say that this will be passed down. So we want to query if this is testing. And if it's not, then simply don't render this use helper. Now that we have this in place, we can see that this is uh, underlined and this is because of TypeScript. We'll fix that just now. But if we go back to our scene, we can see the bounding box is no longer there. Because we are using TypeScript to get rid of that line, we need to actually declare our type of props. And the type will be that we will have a is testing variable and this will be type of Boolean. Now we need to just say that our React component is a React component, a functional component with the generic prop. And there we go. Now the line is gone. If we save that and go back to our main scene, if we now turn the testing back to true, if we go back to our application, we can see that here we have our bounding box, the axes, as well as the stats. And this is just a simple way for us to switch this on and off. In this tutorial, you learned a bit more about React and how to pass props, but that is good because we are in a React environment, so we need to make use of that. There is a lot more helpers in this list. Taking a look at the grid helper, we can lay out a grid so we know where the floor is going to be. So what we can do is use the grid helper. Again, this is an easy one to apply. So what we can probably do is copy this, paste it in here, and change this to our grid helper. Then for the arguments, we can see it takes in a size and divisions. So for the size, let's make it 10 and 10 divisions as well. Save this and go back to the application. Now we can see our helper grid. So with all these helpers, we will get a very nice working dev environment to set up anything that we need to. This will help us in our development journey. Now you can see that the background here is white. Let me quickly show you how you can change the background color of your scene. Changing the background color of our scene is very simple. We can see that the canvas is being wrapped by this outer div with a class container. So in the global styles of this container, we can simply add a background color. And let's maybe make this dark gray. Save this and go back. And now we can see a dark gray background. And the gray is good enough for us to still see our grid. And that is it for this video. There are a lot more helpers that you can go and explore by yourself. However, we will cover more of these as we go on with future tutorials on React 3 Fiber. Now, if you enjoyed this video tutorial series, please give this video a thumbs up, comment below, and also remember to subscribe so you don't miss any content. I look forward to seeing you in the next video where we will continue our React 3 Fiber journey. Have a fantastic day. Cheers for now.